Hello and welcome to the Clashing of Steel. So today I'm going to show how and why bottleneck areas matter. The ideal troops to seal off bottleneck areas usually are spearmen. Just because spears have phalanx which is very defensive and they can spread themselves out. Also the pikemen of course. The original plan here was to go offensive through the hills to the forest. But there was just too many of us and not enough opponents, so we had to reposition. We could not fight against such huge numbers on the open ground. While my team member moved to the position, I was fighting against the cavalry. Not exactly fighting, but just forcing them away. Pushing them back through the bottlenecks where it was hard for them to circle around. But still, I am needed at that bottleneck down there. Because he's Germanicus, he can stay there even when archers are firing, slingers or any other units. He can just withstand it and act accordingly when opponents are near. Laying on the defensive, like holding the bottleneck area, isn't all just about the defense. You need to combine defense with offense, and when you're going offense, you need to do the same thing. You need to combine offense with defense. That waste of light pile up. That's just sad. Well, we're actually doing it quite well here. He has two units defending, and I have two units covering the rear and one covering the archers. Now you will see him spread out, and he will use a charge to engage, which is a show of offense. He didn't just wait there for the opponents to engage him. He used form of offense to engage opponents. If he would have had spears here, the phalanx would have been the correct uh, defensive start. With Phalanx, the first engagement would have been a bit different. You would have had to wait for the opponents to engage you, and then start pushing through them and pulling back. Sort of a dance with opponents, pushing through them and pulling back. The opponents in this bottleneck would have actually had many choices, but instead they forced themselves deep into our territory, deep into our defensive location. They could have circled around from the right, pushing over the hill and forcing me to engage with one of my units and by doing so, more units would have been engaged, and the opponent's cavalry might have actually had a chance of sneaking through and going after the archers, light artillery, or just flanking our units. Well, I'm guessing it didn't help that I was playing Vercingetorix, so I used my skills to support. And the reinforcements that are arriving are using the same narrow-minded, blinding tactic the last guys used. Although my friend did lose his unit against the three swordsmen, he held them in place long enough for my scorched dirt to pay off. And now I'm sending in one of my units. It seems that our opponents didn't learn much from the first engagement they encountered. We practically held this area by two units at a time against uh, four or even more units. And once the unit was lost, we switched in another one. This here was just a perfect situation. The side was towards our ranged units, and because of that, our ranged units didn't have to shoot over us and could damage the opponents while doing minimal damage towards us. I switched to the defense because my friend had already lost some troops here. And now that the ranged units can no longer support us, we need to be very careful with our actions. Unfortunately, some opponents got through and uh, I lost one of my units. My team member's original idea was to circle behind the opponents the area they could have used to flank us. But because my units aren't that excellent at holding these positions, I lost control of one of them and he had to come back. But still, this situation is a great victory. Opponents pushed themselves deep into our forces, head on without any plan of flanking. And because of the blobbing or stacking, they also took a lot of damage from the scorched earth. Bottlenecks are a really important part of the game. If you can use them correctly, you can withstand against the odds that could otherwise surround you and swarm you. Well now it's just the time to kill off the stragglers and be done with them. If we would have had spearmen here, we would have probably had less losses and we stood a bit better. Because of the Destudo, my friend could have just held in place even against the archers. Often enough, opponents are just greedy and going head-to-head -head battles, hoping to win. This is probably one of the harshest lessons I have given to three players who have tried to push through our defensive location. This can just show that in a head-to-head -head battle without any tactics 
and with just a struggle match, that there is no chance against players who use tactics. Well, it does depend on the numbers and the units you're playing with, but even here, I have practically 1.3 units alive, my friend has, well, a bit under 1, and we did rather well against 3 opponents' sword infantries. If we would have ended up fighting them in the open ground, our situation would have been a lot grimmer. We might have lost all the units against those numbers. So the best idea is always to use the terrain for your advantage. May it be bottleneck, um, forest, high grass or just a high ground. Also, when opponents are trying to use the bottlenecks against you, you should use ranged units to weaken them or kill them, making sure that you have the upper hand when fighting in their bottleneck. You can also try and send units behind their bottleneck, forcing them to fight on two different lines at the same time. It all depends on the situations you are dropped in, and no situation is exactly the same. Well, this was pretty much it. Try to use bottlenecks for your advantage, try to work with your team. In overall, the terrain and positioning can help you a lot. So, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.